The Acacia koa, or simply koa, as it is more popularly known, is the largest tree in the Hawaiian forest. Some of its Hawaiian names include koa ia, koa ie, and koa oha, although its most common name is the dwarf koa. It is known for being one of the most valuable timbers in the world. It can grow up to anywhere between 49 and 82 feet, and in volcanic ash, can grow up to 98 feet. This Hawaiian giant is endemic to the islands of Hawaii, Maui, Kauai, Oahu, Molokai, and Lanai. The meaning of the word koa means warrior in Hawaiian. During the reign of King Kamehameha the Great, his warriors created weapons and built canoes from koa wood. This particular wood is very durable and plentiful on the big island of Hawaii. The earliest records of Hawaiian weapons are known as leo mano, which were intricately designed with shark teeth and marlinbill, and the rest of koa wood. Hand-to-hand -hand combat was the most efficient way of fighting and koa wood was a great attribute in helping win wars because it efficiently wounded other warriors easily and with this showed an example of power from the conquering victims. In the late 1700s, King Kamehameha and his warriors traveled up the island chain to unite all the islands under his rule, and Koa played a significant role in the king's quest to bring the Hawaiian islands together. After huge plots of these native trees were cut down for farms and pineapple and sugarcane fields, it is high time we make efforts to bring them back to our islands. It's really hard now to go find a koa tree that you could actually make a canoe out of. They're out there, but the biggest of the bigs are all gone. So, you know, scientists have been able to date and some koa trees, you know, are hundreds, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years old. Those are obviously the biggest ones. Those have all been cut down. So I think finding the monster trees, that's one way it's changed. Um, probably some of the genetic diversity has been lost. You know, like koa ia is a variety of koa that occurs at lower elevations and in certain areas that genetic diversity is totally gone or has been restricted to just a few trees. So I think genetic loss, the old, old trees have been lost. Other than that, I mean, there's still plenty of seeds out there and plenty of land to plant more trees. Hawaii happens to be known as the endangered species capital of the world as the island hosts a variety of endangered species, including koa. It's definitely endangered. And why is it endangered? Um, I'll tell you, there's, um, um, there's a, a bird that used to visit this property every year when they had the koa trees down there. They were dead, but I've got some new saplings. And, uh, but every year that particular bird would come and he had a certain whistle and he would follow me around the property and I, what, I could never see that bird. Then I went with Lance De Silva, the head of the Environmental Protection Agency, and, Ran and Randy Joseph, the head of the DNLR, and they took me out country and showed me the different stands of woods. And they have a lot of planted wood that's there. You know, they have a, a mile or so of eucalyptus, a mile of white ash, a mile of blue gum, whatever. And then we came to the Koa forest, and there was hundreds of those birds. And I found out that that bird uh, um, eats a little grub that goes into the bark of the koa tree and it's the urine from that grub like a maggot thing the urine from that is too acid for the tree and eventually kills the koa tree so all the all the all the trees down country below 2000 foot people who came here 25 years ago and planted koa along their driveways now all those trees are dead or dying because this because there's no, no more hardly any koa for those birds to live in they've all moved up country so the thing about invasive species, the thing that took care of that invasive grub has now, all the, the, the predator of that, these little birds, have now moved up country. And so consequently, the koa is dying down country here because that bug is, is now rampant and it's affecting the koa tree, the acid from that bug. While koa is technically not on the endangered species list, there was a greater number of koa trees years ago compared to now. It's not on an endangered species list. Um, there's still some around. As far as the county is concerned, I can walk at the back of my property here 
and there are massive color trees. Uh, but you're not, you're not able to buy them, you're not able to harvest them, they're just there, you know. A lot of them are rotting and dying, you know. That, that invasive bug is working its way up, up the mountain bit by bit. Every year goes up another few hundred foot, you know. It hasn't really reached here, but it's very close, you know. Um, but you know, nobody's really taking care of it. The, 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 I think the county considers, well, it's just a wood. Uh, uh, it's not, it's not, as it's not on the endangered list, nothing's really been done about it. You know? Even though koa is not endangered or even rare, um, you know, it used to cover so much more of the mountain. You know, and then goats and pigs and cows, you know, got let loose hundreds of years ago. And then it's never been the same. Restoration efforts have ranged from small garden locations in urban areas to hundreds of acres of former ranch lands. In a cooperative effort of the University of Hawaii, the USDA Forest Service Institute of the Pacific Islands Forestry, and the Hawaii Agriculture Research Center, they are investigating whether middle-aged koa trees respond to thinning, fertilization, and release from weed competition. Hundreds of students statewide are involved in some type of restoration of native Hawaiian plants and koa restoration is one of the highest priorities. Well, they are kind of the cornerstone species of the native forest. So, you know, unless you're right on the ocean or above the tree line, like at 8,000, 9,000, 10,000 feet elevation, it is the main canopy species of the mesic and wet forest. So it provides shade, houses for birds, overstory for all the other species, recharges the watershed. Um, so it's really just an important part, I think, in keeping the watershed healthy.